Hello everybody, welcome to the Book to Club of June. This month brought to you by Propafol. Mm. Mm -mm. So I had a Dutch friend come visit me a couple weeks ago and he kindly brought me a package of strobe waffles. And if you don't know what strobe waffles are, damn you're missing out. So since apparently this has turned into Jenny's taking you on a culinary adventure, Maybe it would be interesting to know what the typical sweet treat of the places where you're from. For example, from where I'm from, the typical dessert would be like apple strudel or saha torta. So yeah. Okay, maybe we should move on to books now. So first off, I have to say I actually read some really good books this month. If you would have asked me up until May what my top books of the year were, it probably ended up being like the Raven Boys, the Raven Boys, the Raven Boys, and that was it. Because I don't know why, but up until now, everything I read was good, but it didn't really blow my mind. And this month, I have a couple of candidates. The first book that I read in June is actually a book that has a lot of buzz around it, not really on booktube. I don't think I've heard anybody on booktube talk about it. Um, but rather on the bestseller list, and it's The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. And this is a historical fiction set in World War II. And when I first read it, I was like, uh, is this gonna be like, you know, something along the lines of All the Light We Cannot See? Which, as you guys probably know, I absolutely love that book, but I didn't want to read like a copy of that book. But it, it just got so crazy good reviews that it basically had to check it out. It's about two sisters, two French sisters, and one of the sisters, the younger one, she had a very neglected past. Her family didn't really take care of her, so she developed this rebellious streak. Whereas the other sister, you know, because their mother died young and their father didn't really care about the siblings, she kind of just wanted to have like the safe home. She got a husband soon, she got family soon, and she wanted to, you know, have this perfect family in which her younger sister didn't really fit into it. And then, you know, as time progresses, the war starts, and I, what I really enjoy about this book is that it tells you the perspective of someone who is trying to rebel, which is the younger sister, against the Nazi regime, and then someone who's just trying to live within without attracting any attention, which is the older sister. I really love the characters, I really love the story. Um, the writing in parts is very beautiful, in parts it's also a little bit unspectacular, uh, which is kind of weird, but it did not really lessen my enjoyment of the book. So if you're into historical fiction, if you're into the World War II time, I would definitely recommend it. It was a really good book. The second book that I read was definitely something, and it was Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. If I would have to label it, I would say it's kind of like a science fictional realism. It's very difficult to categorize. Um, it basically has three main plot lines. So the overlaying arc is about our world as we know it, and one day this flu breaks out and it wipes out almost all of the humans, like probably 99% of the people. So the first storyline follows a famous actor who dies on the day the flu breaks out, not because of the flu, but because of a heart attack. The second storyline follows a little girl who used to know that actor and her life after the flu, and she's part of a wandering orchestra trying to shed some art into the desolate society post apocalypse and this third storyline it kind of follows this graphic novel that this girl acquired at her young age and it was one of the relics of the past world and it's a science fiction graphic novel about uh, the world being invaded by aliens and people fleeing on a planet-like spaceship called the Station Eleven. And in the beginning, you're kind of confused in how these three storylines play together, but then suddenly you see small connections, like things that happen in one storyline suddenly pop up in the other storyline, and in the end, it's like, bing, the magical connection happens, and you're just like, oh my god, this is so good. It is quirky, and it is unique, and I really loved it. The next book that I read was The First Fifteen Lives of Harry August by Claire North, and that book was also absolutely fantastic. It's about a guy named Harry August, and he lives his life and when he dies, he basically relives his life again with the memories of all of his previous lives. At the end of one of his lives, at his deathbed, this girl suddenly shows up and she's telling him that the world is ending faster and faster and he has to figure out why. The author goes through each of his first 15 lives in more or less detail and each of his lives 
is basically like a story in its own and it's basically like a mashup of different books and different stories into like one person and one book and it's lovely just to see how it all plays together I thought it was a really cool concept and it made me go through like a lot of different thoughts you know because all of his lives were so different so it kind of pushes your mind into different directions all at once and that was super cool and I thought it was a really great book. So I decided to read the Shadowhunter short stories by Cassandra Clare, which are like the Welcome to the Shadowhunter Academies following Simon Lewis. Again, if you haven't read, finished the Infernal Devices or the Moral Instruments, um, this might be spoilerful right now, but if you have, keep on listening. I really liked it because it's very episodic, so they bring in a lot of characters, bringing like Tessa and Jace and Clary and Isabel, and you see how Simon's a relationship towards the characters redevelops in a sense. These characters are usually introduced into a story in a way of um, teaching them like a lesson. So Tessa, for example, will tell them a story about her past, which obviously contains Will Harrodale. Will Harrodale. But I think I'm gonna keep on reading them. Yeah. So that was it. That was my month of June. Again, have you read anything great this month? Please tell me. I would love to know. Um, and thanks for watching, so see you next time. Bye-bye. Jenny, you're insane. And it was just like this big, black, all-consuming hole that was opening up inside of me. I'm not gonna lie, was excruciatingly boring.